Hey everybody, Midnight Ninja here. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about CPU undervolting. Now this is a very nice way to reduce the heat on your laptop or desktop. Mostly a laptop is where it's beneficial because it also increases battery life. There's less power being used. It may be negligible. You might get anywhere between 5 and 15 minutes, maybe a half hour. Kind of depends on a lot of factors. But this is relatively safe. In fact, it's extremely safe. Um, the most that you can do is cause a reboot. So when does a crash, reboot, and you're back to zero and you're good to go. So not a whole lot can happen if you screw this up. So this is much easier than you think. And we're going to be using both Prime95 and uh, Intel XTU or Extreme Tuning Utility. So what we're going to do here is I have Prime95 running. It's running well, it has been for a while now because I've attempted this video a couple times and I kept screwing it up. <laughs> but let it run and we want to check package temperature here. So what we've got is an average to max of 156 degrees. Now also notice that my max core frequency is at 2.9. My core voltage offset, which is up here on the top right, by the way, should be under the advanced tuning core tab or section, I guess, uh, core voltage offset is still set at zero. Now, the safe way to tune this is to take this value and raise it up one notch at a time. That's the safest way. Raise it up a notch into the negative and hit apply. Then let Prime95 run for 15-20 yeah, minutes and check your package temperatures. If Windows hasn't crashed, you're good to go. But keep an eye on the temps because this is really what we're after. We're trying to reduce the temperature of the CPU and the cooling system in general. So now I have already tested this and I can go a whole lot higher. But the idea behind this and being safe is that every time you want to do another test and see where you land, see if it's safe, is to bump it up one notch, hit apply, let Prime95 run for a while and see what happens. Now you'll notice that my max core frequency has already started going up. That's actually a good thing. I kind of like that. So you do get a little bit of a performance boost out of it. It might not be much, and you may not even notice it if, unless you're really skilled at it, but there is a bit of a performance gain here. So I'm going to jump this up quite a bit because for me, I've tested this all the way up to minus 0.185. Now, the reason I know this is the most that I can do is I've actually set mine to 0.195 and it crashes. Windows immediately crashes as soon as I hit apply. 0.190 worked even after I hit apply, but after about 15, or 15 to 20 minutes of Prime 95, Windows froze, crashed, and rebooted again. I put it down one more notch to 0.185, apply, Everything worked. It ran overnight. Prime95 had no issues. It was still running and everything had passed. So I know that 0.185 for me is stable. Now, if I'm playing a game, that's also going to heat up the GPU, which means that I may get more heat and kind of negate most of the effect that I'm doing here. So I might even back that off down to 0.175 and feel completely content with that. That's not bad. So we have it at 0.185. I'm going to hit apply. And over here, we're going to watch the package temperatures. Now we'll have to let it run for a minute to kind of level out and cool off enough to where it gets down to its actual average temperature. Now, if you notice max core frequency, the one down here in the bottom has jumped up again. Now we're at 3.1 instead of 2.89. So again, I've bumped up the max core frequency by lowering the voltage. My, uh, Core voltage has obviously gone down from one point, uh, well, yeah, let's not confuse you with that part, shall we? Uh, but anyway, so I said an average of 156 or so, and for the package temperature, now we are looking at an average max of 147. So we're already looking at a nine degree drop in temperature. With an increase in max core frequency, I'd say that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Now, this is running on 
a Acer Predator G9793. It's a 17 inch gaming laptop. Um, I will do more stress testing on this uh, when I get around to benchmarking with uh, the GPU. But so far I found this, this setting to be safe. I haven't tested battery life. That's a little harder to actually test than you would think. But I'm not so worried, so much worried about that. I do generally leave it plugged in, but I would like everything to run just a little bit cooler. So this seems to be the best way to do it. Now on a reboot, this value will be will go back to zero, which means after reboot, you'll have to open XTU, reapply the voltage offset that you want that you found that's stable, hit apply, and you can actually just hit X in the top corner because XTU ends up staying down here in the system tray. You can stop monitors if you want to decrease a little bit of overhead, but uh, generally for me 0.185, for others you may get more voltage decrease than that. Um, some may not get that high even with the same CPU, but uh, just give this a try, see what happens. Again, you really can't hurt anything. If you crash and you reboot, it's not a big deal. Nothing's going to, you know, it's not going to destroy your data or wipe your hard drive or, you know, fry your CPU or anything like that. It's perfectly safe. So if you like this video, let me know, like, share, and subscribe. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see me stress test another component, uh, maybe tweak another piece, do a benchmark, something like that. It really helps me. And again, thank you guys for just over 200 subscribers. This is a milestone I didn't think I'd reach, but I am glad to have you guys here. Until next time, have a good one, guys.